Good morning all. Now, till now we have discussed what lateral air pressure means, what the three types of lateral air pressure could be, which includes active, passive and at rest pressure. And we defined coefficient of lateral air pressure K, again, which can have Ka, Kp or K0 depending on the case. And we define the relations of sigma V and sigma H vertical stress and horizontal stress which is defined and connected by K coefficient of lateral air pressure. Now we'll move to some relations connecting each terms here. Now I have defined the slope or a ground level here beneath which I have considered a soil element. Now that soil element is acted upon by sigma V which is the vertical stress and sigma H which is the horizontal stress. Now, likewise, if I take a triaxial soil element here, which is of course a cylindrical sample, it is acted upon by sigma 1, the major principal stress, and sigma 3, the minor principal stress. Now, in the previous semester, we had defined the relation between sigma 1 and sigma 3 as sigma 1 equal to sigma 3 tan square alpha plus 2c tan alpha. And for pure sand, we had defined sigma 1 is equal to sigma 3 tan square alpha, which means cohesion turns out to be zero. Now when you compare the soil element which is acting acted upon by sigma v and sigma h and the triaxial soil element which is acted upon by the major principles for sigma 1 and the minor principles for sigma 3, I can derive or relate a few equations. Case 1 is active pressure case. Now in active pressure case, the slip angle would be this. With respect to the horizontal, it will be 45 plus 5 by 2 and the wedge would try to fail like this downward and outward. Now in that case, in that case what really happens is sigma 1 is equal to sigma v which is equal to the gamma h and sigma 3 is equal to sigma a which is equal to k gamma h. Now don't get confused, it's quite simple. It just means that in case of active pressure, minor principal stress is sigma A and major principal stress is the vertical stress. Or in short, the vertical stress is higher compared to the horizontal stress. Horizontal stress here is nothing but sigma A. So we define sigma 1 is equal to sigma V which is equal to gamma h and sigma 3 minor principal stress is equal to horizontal or the active stress in this case is equal to k into gamma h. Now when it comes to passive case, passive pressure, the angle is like this 45 minus 5 by 2 and the movement of the wedge is like this rightward and upward. Now, in that case, major principal stress will be the passive pressure or the horizontal stress and minor principal stress will be the vertical stress or sigma v is equal to gamma into h. In short, in case of active pressure, minor principal stress is active pressure and in case of passive pressure, major principal stress is a passive pressure. Now, to define these things, we have a theory, an earth pressure theory proposed by Rankin. Now, Rankin considered a soil element quite similar to what we have done in the previous slide and studied the equilibrium. And he had the following assumptions. Of course, most of them are the common ones. Soil is homogeneous. Soil is semi-infinite. Soil is dry and cohesionless. The ground surface is plain. Now, plane can be either inclined or horizontal. The back of the wall is smooth and vertical. Soil is in plastic equilibrium. Now, based on these assumptions, Rankin tried to arrive at a few relations. Now, like we said earlier, active pressure, sigma 1, major is equal to vertical, minor is equal to active pressure. And Ka, which is nothing but 
the ratio of horizontal to vertical stress is defined by 1 minus sine phi by 1 plus sine phi. Now, Ka is nothing but the coefficient of lateral air pressure in active condition, and Rankin defined it as 1 minus sine phi by 1 plus sine phi, where phi is the angle of internal friction. Likewise, in passive pressure, it's the reverse. You have the wedge moving inward and upward, and sigma 1 or the major principal stress is a passive pressure, minor 1 is a vertical pressure. And he defined Kp, coefficient of lateral air pressure in passive case, as the reciprocal of Ka. So Kp is equal to 1 plus sine phi by 1 minus sine phi. That's about the passive pressure. Now we have the third one, at rest pressure. K0 is defined as 1 minus sine phi, where phi is again the angle of internal friction. It's called the Zeke's formula. So K0 is also defined as mu by 1 minus mu, where mu is a Poisson's ratio. Now, we'll move to what is called as an air pressure distribution diagram. An air pressure distribution diagram is quite similar to a shear force diagram, a bending moment diagram. It, 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 it easily gives you an idea about the distribution of pressure on a retaining wall. Now, we'll take the case number one, where you have a dry backfill, which means you have a retaining wall here, and there's a backfill. Backfill is nothing but the soil which the retaining wall retains. And let's assume that it has a height of H marked like this. And we'll try to define what active earth pressure distribution could be. Now it looks like a triangle. The distribution is triangular in nature, and it starts from zero at the top and attains a value of Ka gamma H at the bottom like this which means the distribution is linear or it varies linearly with height at H is equal to zero pressure distribution's value is zero and at H is equal to H the pressure will have a value of Ka into gamma into H now the area of the pressure distribution diagram gives you the total earth pressure magnitude PA or PP depending on the case. PA for active, PP for passive. Now, the value PA being the resultant will be acting at a height of H by 3 from the base which is nothing but the height of the centroid of the triangle. So obviously, PA is nothing but the area of the triangle given by half into base width into height or half into k a gamma h into h or in simple terms half k a gamma h square so that's nothing but the area of the triangle with the magnitude p a acting at a height of h by 3 from the base and like that we have the passive pressure with the only difference that the base width instead of k a gamma h will be k p gamma h and of course, since Kp is greater than Ka, you will have a longer base here and you'll have a higher magnitude of lateral earth pressure, giving you a bigger triangle. And Pp will be acting at the same h by 3 above the base and its value will be defined by half Kp gamma h squared. Now the next case is that of a submerged backfill, which means you have the retaining wall of height h and you have the backfill but the backfill is not dry but submerged like this you have the water table there in that condition you have ka gamma dash into h with the base and the distribution is the same right angle triangle starting at zero at the top but in addition to this you have another triangle with the base gamma w into h so in short the base length will be the sum of ka gamma dash h and gamma w into h with two different slopes now of course the slope of ka gamma dash h distribution will be different from gamma w h distribution so you will have to add the areas of these two triangles to get the resultant pa 
for active pressure. Now, case number three, backfill with a uniform surcharge, which means you have the same retaining wall, you have the backfill, but you have an extra load Q acting on top of it. And when you have the surcharge load Q, the term which comes into picture is Ka into Q as an addition, which means you have the same triangle Ka gamma H plus you have another rectangle Ka into Q base. So you have two figures added together. One will have the same triangle of height H and base Ka gamma H and two will have a rectangle of height H and base Ka into Q. So when you add these two areas together, you will get PA. Now, the earth pressure distribution of passive case is quite analogous to the active case with the only difference of Ka replaced by Kp. So which means in case number two, when you are, you, when you are asked to find the passive pressure, all you need to do is replace Ka with Kp and same thing applies here as well. So whenever Ka becomes Kp, the only difference is that you will have a wider base width. Now, the next case is a backfill with a sloping ground, which means in the previous cases you had the retaining wall, you had the backfill which was level and horizontal. But in this case, you have the backfill as a slope like this with an angle beta. So in that case, the pressure distribution diagram is quite the same triangle distribution diagram, but the value of Ka will be different. Ka will be having a function of beta in it, cos beta multiplied by this term, which will have beta and phi. So this equation reflects the presence of angle of internal friction phi and also the angle at which the sloping ground exists.